What's up, guys? I'm Jagger Moon. Hey, I'm James. Hi, guys. I'm Shane. I'm Jason. I'm Sean. And we are Full Circle. Ain't no party like a Full Circle party because a Full Circle party don't stop. We know that you all knew each other in a certain way before, so you naturally created the Full Circle concept. But how was the invitation process to make everybody join the group? So Sean and I auditioned, and Shane actually also, also auditioned. Um, and, but Sean and I made it in at first cause Shane, he just looked very young at the time cause he is very young. He got a lot older and we just wanted him to get a little taller and older and he did. Um, and so eventually we brought, we like, I think his mom might've called our manager at some point and he became part of the group for Jagger. I think I literally just DM'd him. I was just like, Hey, check your email or something. I like um hey i want you to be a part of this group or something like that i remember saying something and then james was just kind of like we were like I, I wanted him in it and then sean and i sat him down in a room and told him to sing for like three hours it was bad. <laughs> yeah and he did not sing uh but he eventually sang sean and i were like told you were in it in the beginning but they'd already seen shane's and they knew they liked shane and everybody it just kind of naturally formed I'll read, it, I'll read it to you i remember because jason was at a party apparently with someone that i knew and then he told them about the boy band and i hadn't heard anything like at mm -hmm. all and then this person texted me and they're like you're in a boy band with jason peters and sean garrity and i was like and i'd only met sean once before then <laughs> and then i um me and jason kind of knew each other i was like i was like what are you talking about i was like who's sean jason dm'd me may 19th 2021 and mm -hmm. said, hey, I've seen you posting a lot of singing stuff, so I sent your name into my producers for a boy band and they're very interested. It is being put together by the producers of this other boy band. If you've heard of them, let me know. And then he sent me like a name. I hadn't heard of them though. And then I know one of the producers DM'd you about it possibly with more information. His name is John and I just know that this is a pretty big deal. If you can please get back to him, if you have any questions that you're not comfortable with asking him at all, feel free to ask me. And I was really confused because I was like, <laughs> I have nothing about no boy bands. Like the only boy band I knew was One Direction. So you guys have been singing or dancing since you guys were kids. And what was the first contact you guys had with music? Um, I started when I was really young, about five, four or five. Um, funny story is I had a speech impediment when I was younger and I was born with a raspy voice. So like singing and dancing and acting was a way for me to talk more and people to understand me. So my parents put me in that and then uh, I just really enjoyed it. Um, then I started doing things professionally at like seven years old, but I just, I loved it. It was what I love to do. It wasn't work. So funny story. I really thought my two cousins who are older than me, love them to death. They were very into sports. So I was just like, I idolized them and everything. I was like, I need to do sports. And then when I was three, this movie called High School Musical came out. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I want to be like Troy Bolton. <laughs> but when I took it that way, I was like, I need to do sports. So I did basketball <laughs> for a really long time. But my parents claim that at my first basketball game, I got the ball and I didn't dribble it. I just went down the court singing, get your head in the game. Like, dancing my way <laughs> down the court to the hoop and i so i guess that high school musical and then michael jackson are the main things that got me into all of it i owe a lot of who i am to mr zach efron's portrayal of <laughs> Troy Bolton. i you talked about introduction i feel like my first introduction to music would probably have to be the wiggles yeah, Ooh. that was that was the first concert I ever went to. Uh, I was 14. I'm just kidding. No, I was like what? three. <laughs> so that was that was my introduction to music. But I think through the years, especially dancers are very connected to the, the music side and I always try to find new music and listening to everything. But I think right around 12 or 13, I found Ms. Billie Eilish. And I closely related to her a lot. Um, so that was, she was kind of my person and that really got me into music, like deep dive. And now this, and it's been awesome ever since. 
I feel like I've always kind of been into music, like um, kind of making music and singing. I've always wanted to, but a lot of people when I was growing up told me that I like sucked and like to oh stop. My gosh. Yeah, and so I did for a while. And then um, during COVID, um, I started singing and stuff again because I was just like bored. And I wanted to learn how to like produce music and make music on my computer. And so then I really focused on that. From what I can remember when I was like a really little kid, my parents had given me like this little kid Spider-Man like electric guitar that like really worked. <laughs> I never really played it, but like I had one, you know, like music's always kind of been pushed onto me. I feel like I've always been connected to music. I remember every morning before I'd head to school, my parents would put on this channel. I think it was like MTV or something. And they'd always play like these music videos. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be able I want to be able to do that one day. And then I was never like a really big on sports. And my parents were like, James, like you need to get into something. Like you can't just be like at home, you know? So <laughs> my friend, she actually invited me to a dance class and I ended up really loving it. And then I kind of just stuck with dance. And then that kind of just connected me to music even more. So since we're talking about music, if there's one thing a listener can take away from your songs what would you like that to be i would have to say happiness i just hope they're happy that always makes me happy to read and hear about people just getting joy from anything that we do whether it can be as stupid as a little TikTok that we do or even our music or music videos or just anything we do it's just awesome to hear that people find happiness in it i want yeah. people to like listen to our music and feel like they can have fun i think my number one goal throughout this whole like boy band thing is to just inspire others i just want them to feel whatever they are going on with their life at the moment just feel it in the music and then you know it helps them through that it's all feeling music so i think that's something really cool and preferably i would want them to be happy obviously but <laughs> hey a sad song and you're jamming out in the car i mean that's a vibe you know you can relate to it I would just say we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. So <laughs> even though Dangerous is like not a happy song, mm -hmm. it's still very much like you can get down to it. Like you can still vibe. <laughs> Try to make sure like when we hear a song, we're like, can we dance to this? Can something be made to it? And then therefore allowing the audience or the listener to be able to move to it. <laughs> So you guys are always in touch with your fans and some of them actually are working for you guys. They are part of your team. So how does this partnership work? I love it. I think it's really cool. Yeah. When Transparency dropped, that's how they found us, blah, blah, blah. They're like really into it. And then some of us would just like text them over like Instagram DMs because everything was so new to us. Like we didn't know what was going on. We we're like, yeah. oh, these people will be friends, blah, blah, blah. Like we didn't. At least I never thought of them as fans. I was just like, oh, this is somebody who likes to talk to me, I guess. I think around Don't Miss or Anytime, they started to get very involved. Like, they help us choose the fandom's name and everything. And so <laughs> since then, it's just been like, a, they've helped us a lot. And I'm very thankful for it because even though sometimes we piss them off, I know we, I know we make them <laughs> bad sometimes. But um, I've been very grateful for them because they just, they... They really want what's best for us, so I'm really appreciative of them. I hear summed it up pretty well. Yeah, they're just like great people. They're like great assets to have because they really keep us on top of everything because we are by no means, you know, social media influencers, you know, like we definitely are like new to this social media stuff. And they do a really good job of like keeping us connected with fans and letting us know what the outside view is. Like if you if you know who they are, like the Infinity's HQ, if you're connected to them and you're a fan of full circle just makes everything a whole lot better there's just so many amazing things that they put together and like we'll do live streams we'll do zoom parties we'll do a bunch of fun stuff it's just so much better anything else i've ever seen the next question is specifically for shane because oh. i've heard that you have performed next to justin bieber and mariah carey which is oh. insane so what was that <laughs> like being on stage with singers like them I mean, it was a blessing. Um, it was so much fun. Uh, I was young. Uh, I did Beaver when I was like 10 years old. I was on his purpose tour and it was just good to see like my idol, my inspiration right in front of me. And um, just, it gave me more motivation. I was like, I can do that. I can be on stage, you know? I, and then I did it, right? And then I was like, yeah. oh, I'm singing, all that, blah, 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 blah. It was just, the main thing I got from it is just to see like, you could still be a good person with that fame, you know? Mm, yeah. Like 
Mariah Carey, she was so nice to the kids. Uh, I have some funny stories. Like all the time she was on vocal rest. So she would always be like, I love you guys. Like she would mouth it with her, her mouth and everything. <laughs> That's so sweet. Dog. But it was just, you know, it's good to, to see that they're still a good person. And then, you know, that's the main thing I got from it. We saw that you guys created an NFT recently. So can you guys tell us a little bit about that? Oh, did we? <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. I was, I was just kidding. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. It's like, if you know anything about Pokemon, I'm going to be a nerd right now. Um, Pokemon <laughs> is um, you get a little pack of cards and then you open it. You don't know what, you don't know what Pokemon you're going to get. So maybe you'll have you'll have a lot of cards that don't have a lot of value and then maybe you'll get a Charizard. So with ours for our digital collectible, you'll buy a component pack and then in that component pack will be a certain background that might not be very like, well, not what am I trying to say? Not a lot of component packs will have that background and then maybe there'll be a picture of sean that's in every component pack but then there'll be a, a picture of jason that's only in like five and you happen to get that five therefore that card will instantly be more valuable and then once you get all these components you can make a picture out of all of them and then that's specifically your own full circle booth party component thingy and you get to you can put it on the blockchain for a certain price and then you can like trade it to people if they pay the correct amount of money that you want for it and then the longer you hold on to it and then the longer we keep going as a band and if we get more popular that card becomes very valuable and yeah so it's just a weird little fun trading game that you can also make fun little pictures we're gonna have some things that are connected to it like we're doing 15 percent off of merch uh if you buy it this is just in the works because we don't have a tour but potentially using them as tickets to get to meet and greets and special events so they'll have a ton of cool stuff connected to them besides how cool the art is also it's like also like listening parties and yeah. then for our next single and then also a live stream like concert like a virtual concert that you'll get to watch over the computer so guys i'm not sure if you know this but our website we in the crowd is pretty much dedicated specifically to live music. So I really want to know when I will be able to be in your full circle crowd. Like, how do you guys feel about touring? We want to tour we so badly. Oh yeah. We, we lived in Florida together for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And then we were in this house performing. That Perform house wasn't quiet <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> oh, no, like no. performing for each other. Like there was never a quiet moment. <laughs> And then we like made all those TikToks that went viral and stuff. And then like <laughs> we would go to dance classes and stuff and dance with people. And we were just like, man, like we're doing so much like fun things. We want to go on tour, blah, blah, blah. And then we finally got to do the Hollywood Bowl for Kids Bop. And then we were like, this is crazy. This is like that was so much fun. And then we got to do Life is Beautiful, the festival in Las Vegas. Those were like within two weeks of each other. And then it was just radio silent forever <laughs> and now we're just like we want to go back to performing because it was like we just had a blast we're ready, we're ready. We're ready to go this year. This year. we can say that it'll happen this year okay we'll be waiting we'll okay. be waiting all right please come we'll we'll attend we'll be there okay. we'll cover the show we want to go we want we want to go to brazil even if we don't tour we just want to go you know, we're very close to carnival season. It's just right around the corner. Do you guys know what carnival is? Yes. Yeah. Talking, about it. talking about We were on a call earlier today and then somebody asked me what, or asked all of us what we'd want to do in Brazil. And I said, well, the only thing I really know is the movie Rio. So yeah. I, was, I was naming all these things and I was like, what's the okay. thing that they're doing? And then they're like carnival. And I was like, yes, I want to go to carnival. So speaking of concerts, what's the best concert you guys have ever been to? Let me get my list out. Well, I can tell you guys right now that I've only been to technically one concert and that was what? Wango Tango. That was Wango Tango. That was a good concert. Yeah. yeah. So I went and saw Charlie Puth, Shawn Mendes, five sauce five sauce um i'd say i've been to an adult concert it wasn't like one of her recent concerts but i think i was like i was in elementary school i want to say definitely my favorite person that i've seen live we performed at life is beautiful and then 
maybe an hour or two after we performed, Lord was playing her set. So that was like, that's my favorite person that I've seen live. I just love Lord so much. Besides that, I think one of the most fun I've ever had was when we were at Wango Tango. I believe it was Diplo set. It was, it was Diplo. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, get, we were going crazy. We had Man. we made a conga line. We mm-hmm. made it's it's at a soccer stadium. So we we literally were in a quarter of the stadium, like on the ground, on the grass, just running around doing a That's bunch cool. of funny stuff with like these light sticks. I can't pick. I've been to not to like not to be that guy that's like i've been to a lot of concerts <laughs> but it's like i've been to a lot of great concerts like i saw justin timberlake for the man of the woods tour that was nice. i saw i've seen bieber three times and every time i've just been blown away by it i saw no yeah that was my mom's in the background saying concerts i've seen of i was <laughs> uh, paul mccartney and wow when, that's great when i was like seven or something and it was like the coolest thing ever it was in a soccer stadium and there was fireworks and it was crazy just seeing like he's the living legend like he's the highest paid yeah. rock star to ever live i just oh michael buble michael buble puts on a great show wango tango was so fun getting to see all those artists like do different things because they're all so vastly different yeah and i love five seconds of summer so seeing them <laughs> like they have some videos of me just going crazy to their songs and it's just it's they're amazing dagger that was fun oh tate <laughs> those videos kill me <laughs> tate mccray was there yeah uh, i was yeah i was it's rejected i was rejected oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> james and i didn't go but we've been trying to go to a black pink concert and oh, we yeah. were we were gonna go but I like was doing the math maybe like a month before and I was I'm, I was in New York when they were coming to LA. So that was oh. a very, very dark day. There's yes. still hope because it's rumored that they're performing at Coachella. So, oh well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, James and I are going to go to Coachella if you're, if you're going this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the best concert I've been to was Bruno Mars. It was the 24 karat magic era. Nice. I hate until Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic would be so good, and I can't oh judge. My that would be yeah. my favorite. But Bruno and the Twenty Four Karat Magic Era in Vegas. Oh my gosh! Like that was probably the best live performance I've ever seen. Um, the Purpose That's Tour. Bieber. Bieber, of course, was just insane as usual. I was right in the pit, so I could see him like right here. One that I'm excited for. I'm going to see miss taylor swift in march oh, oh my god don't even say that. Taylor swift. oh my gosh so you guys create your own choreography for the music videos and for tiktoks so what's the creation process behind all of that like it's whatever part you're singing you kind of choreograph we kind of like work off of that system for the past um last time we were in florida because we left for a little bit and then we went back for a week to film videos and stuff for our next five releases that was the first time we've been like yo let's just do a little bit of choreography not choreography to every part so jason got to do the choreography for make you believe and then so on and so forth each person got their own song to choreograph to and people always ask like how long does it take usually we really just get it done like for a boy band tiktok's like 20 minutes usually 20 30 minutes and then um for like a song if we're doing the whole song we honestly like learn it in like an hour or two the whole song is it going to be a new era for, for Full Circle? Like, what are you guys expecting from this new release? Definitely something different. Like, it's different. Yeah. It's a new sound. It's a new vibe for this whole year. It's a new Full Circle sound. Y'all got to just... It's going to... The next songs are all a story. They're all connected. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing to see, like, the potential of this year and see what to expect. I, I heard the song, guys. It's very nice. You guys did You've heard it. You heard yeah, it. Yeah, I did. We, we all cool. did. Yeah. Did you like it? Yes. Great job, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I like you. to, I described it as it's like the beat at least. Cause the one, I think our vocals sound amazing. I think we all sound much older than the <laughs> last batch of songs. I think, I think Make You Believe is just gonna be such a great start to the year. Like the song, I can kind of feel it like inside of me, you know, like it's just <laughs> a very like deep, like song. And I love it, it's my favorite. One of my favorite full songs. Jason, Jason really felt it when we were recording this. <laughs> Make You Believe's vibe is very different from the last batch of songs. Um, so I'm very excited yeah. to see what people have to say about it. 
Can we expect a music video for the song? I hope. Yeah, me, yeah, too. me too. I know for sure that the volumetric capture is coming out. I know that mm -hmm. happening. And we filmed a green screen video for it. Mm -hmm. But then we're doing the booth party. So we're do we've changed. We just gave our idea for the video, which is like the photos, like talking and singing and blah, 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 to incorporate the song and the um, booth party. It I hope it happens. I hope that video gets released because we've told the fans already that their photo will be in that video. <laughs> I think just in general, keep an eye out for our videos this year. I have like a little surprise. So since your new single is called Make You Believe, we came up with a little game. So <laughs> I'm going to read a few interesting Brazilian facts who might or may not be true. And you guys have to tell me if I could make you believe that it was true or not. We played okay. a game like this the other day. I'm excited. Here's the first one. A woman pretended to be pregnant of quadruplets to get famous, but she got exposed by a TV host that thought her stomach looked a little unrealistic. Do you think that's true or not? No, it's not like that happened. I think that's true. I think that's true. I remember something like that happening. I don't know if I it was in the like that's possible. Yeah, that I feel like that's a very American thing to do, mm -hmm. though. I agree. No, I don't, so I don't know. Yes. That's Brazil, oh, it could be American. Look at her expression. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. It may Wait. not be from Brazil. I, I think, think it's I, true, I like but it's an American thing. I think it's true, but it's not from Brazil. It's a very doctor. Well, I feel it's like false. I feel like it's true, and I think it's possible it's from Brazil. Yeah. Well, it is true. She did it. It is Brazilian. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh. I feel yeah, like stuff happened like that at my high school. Somebody <laughs> No way. Somebody walked to the school was like, I'm pregnant. And then we were all like she was like she was like committed to the bit. I see. And then in the middle of the hallway she shouted I was the father and I was like, Oh my god. Okay. Oh. Knock on wood. Too early. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Gotcha there, Jagger. Guys, her belly was like here. <laughs> Huge! It was obviously fake. Oh my! Oh my! God. I feel like I saw this on TikTok or something. <laughs> oh, that is. And then you're uh, believed. That's hella fake. Wow. I know, but people bought it wow. for a really long time. Um. So here's the next one. Um. A reality show contestant cannot handle the pressure of the game, and she passes away. Her colleagues arrange her awake, and it goes viral all across the internet. That's true. Did, Did she, it happen, she, or is it a meme? Am I making it up? What did she happened? die? Yes. Oh, I mean, oh. Technically, technically, that's what I'm saying. Technically, you... she died, and then they brought her back. Then... No, oh. no, no, no. He, they arranged like, a, like a, a funeral, like a wake. You know. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying now. Okay. Uh -huh. I thought you meant they like arranged somehow to make her. I don't no, know no, 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 no. But I get. What I'm gonna say false because I don't want this to be true. Oh, yeah, that's too I mean, nice. Again, we'll say that I think it's true. James is spooked because he's like, is like five years of pressure. <laughs> I think it's true. I think it's true also, sadly. Wow. I feel like people bended the truth. So maybe something like that did happen, but I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to say it's false. I hope it's just a meme. I think it's just a meme. I think it's false. Yeah. Yes, it was a meme, guys. She's alive. She's oh, well. Gosh. Thank <laughs> God. I don't know if Lorena has the picture or not, but it was it was very, very weird. Oh my. <laughs> that's crazy. I thought it was birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's that's wild. Yeah. Our our former president, Jair Bolsonaro, refused to take a COVID nineteen shot because he claimed it would turn him into an alligator. This is true. That's true. true. That's true. I'm saying is true. it? Yeah, yeah true. Against, uh, How are you so sure of it? I want to know. Well, this is not true, but it is true. He's saying the alligator part isn't true. Yeah, like but, he's oh, him I'm saying pretty, that. Like, yeah. Yeah. But he did say this. Yeah, he did say that. Oh, the last one. A woman oh. married a rag doll and had her wedding funded by a bunch of people. And besides that, she claims to have gotten pregnant with her husband with her husband's child, which means it's like a rag doll baby. And she eventually had her rectal birth at a hospital. That's fake. I feel That's like the, I feel like the first part because you hear about people doing that stuff all the time. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, free yeah, to yeah. go, start blah blah blah. Like, and then, but I don't think no hospital is gonna let you go in to have a fake birth Jeez. unless you just like walked into the lobby and was like, 
<laughs> if she got money, she can get a hospital bed if she wants. That's true. I don't know. I'm gonna say it's fake. I'm gonna say half. I'm gonna say I got half of it's fake. I want to say that because I don't want to lose my streak. <laughs> show, show. No. No. Um, oh, yeah, that's trying to happen. Bro, oh. well, that's for real. <laughs> that's yeah. Yes. Wait, but then, does she have a ragdoll child? Yeah, she did. She had a ragdoll doll. I don't want to get come from. I don't want to. I don't want to get too into it. But oh, like, uh, I don't want to get too into it. But like, how do you do that birth? Where like, did the how, doll come I wish from? I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. I don't like, know. How do you go about that? You got it from a build a bear box, and then. <laughs> Yep. All that I know <laughs> is that um, she was trying to raise money to like buy a house, I think, or something, and that got her like a lot of views on the internet. So she kept doing the bit so she could get some money. And there's like a video. Do you guys know Curtis Connor, the YouTuber? Yeah. So he has a video on that, like a, a whole video talking about this ragdoll incident. It's pretty funny. And I have to watch it. I love yeah. Curtis. It's funny. That is crazy. Um, so that was the last question. So to wrap it up, can you guys leave a message for your Brazilian fans? Yeah, I just want to say we love you guys. We appreciate everything you do. You guys are so, like, strong in your faith and <laughs> fandom in us. And I just love it so much. You guys are just the best. Like, I don't I don't know how to express my gratitude for the Brazilian fans. Because they're just, they've been nothing but good to us. Except for when it came around to the World Cup, they are kind of brutal to us. But besides that, uh, yeah. besides yeah. during the World Cup, Y'all were great. I just want to say I love you guys so much. You show us so much love. Some of my best experiences have been because of you guys. Uh, I've learned so many new things. Like that ragdoll baby thing. That was that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> just always a good time with the Brazilians. I want to say I love you guys. Full Circle wouldn't be the same without you. And I always say this, but we're the first at <laughs> We're the first at <laughs> Carnival, baby. We're heading their way. I just love you guys, and I appreciate everything you guys do for us. And like Sean said, we wouldn't be anywhere we are without you guys. And I wouldn't have experienced half the things I've experienced in this past year without you guys. They pretty much summed it all. Uh, I appreciate all you guys. <laughs> I, don't know say. That's, that's, uh, I appreciate you guys. I love you. Um, Finney's HQ girls are all Brazilian, and they help us out so much. So, um, just to know that we have a fan base outside of our country is so cool to me. And I never realized that. And it doesn't hit me until like a couple of moments like this. So um, I, I get to learn so much about Brazil and you guys teach me so much. Um, so I think it's such a good thing to know. And uh, I really appreciate the support. It's really kind.